Hi guys, here we go with our video. 2.4 special groups. We're going to look at special groups on the periodic table. So the first one we're going to look at is group 1. And group 1 are called the alkali metals. Have to know the name. <clears throat> now, these are very reactive. They tend to be the most active metals. And that's because they have only one valence electron. So once they lose that one valence electron, they're going to have a stable electron configuration. If lithium loses one valence electron, it'll have the electron configuration of helium. Sodium loses one valence electron, it'll have the electron configuration of neon. It'll make it very, very happy indeed, so it's very quick to get rid of it. So they tend to form one plus or plus one. You really write it either way. I always go back and forth ions. Now remember, when something forms a positive ion, it's losing electrons. These always form ionic compounds. When they bond with something, they're going to make ionic compounds. We're going to learn more about that in our next unit. And oddly enough, they're kind of soft, and they can be cut with a knife. They're still lustrous, although since they're so reactive, they kind of tarnish or rust over very easily but they are the softer of the metals. Next group we're going to look at is right next door, group 2. And these are the alkaline, we have an extra couple letters here, earth metals. So group 1, right, group 1 was alkali metals. Group 2 is alkaline earth. Now there are a little bit less reactive than group 1, but they're still very reactive. And they're going to have two valence electrons. And since they have just those two valence electrons, they're going to tend to form 2 plus or plus 2 ions. Our next important group is group 17. And they are called halogens. That comes from, I want to say Latin, but it could be Greek, for salt makers. Okay, so something is a halite, which you might even remember from earth science, halites, salts. Okay, so these are going to make salts. They have seven valence electrons. If you look, the last number in the electron configuration for all of these is going to be seven. And these are the most active, the most reactive of the nonmetals. Now, since they're very close, they only need one electron to have, have a stable electron configuration. Oh, before that, they have, these have a tendency to form diatomic molecules. So F is going to be F2, Cl is going to be Cl2, etc., etc., etc. These four are part of our Brinkelhoffs, which we'll go over if we haven't already. R I N C L H O F, and these all tend to form diatomic molecules. Okay, so fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine tend to always form diatomic molecules, and these all tend to form minus one ion. Since they're so close to having a stable electron configuration, they only need one more electron. So they're going to tend to grab those electrons, usually from things in group 1 or group 2, to form 1 minus or minus 1 ions. Or they'll form covalent bonds. Covalent bond is a type of bond where they share electrons. There's more on that in our next unit. All right, so some other things about groups 13 through 16. Group 13, three valence electrons. These don't have special names, by the way, that we need to know. They're going to tend to form three plus ions, because losing one, two, three electrons is easier than gaining five. So they're going to form three plus, as we can see here. Group 14 has four valence electrons. Now we're getting into things that will go e either way, or be more likely to form just covalent bonds. They're not going to tend to form ions. Group 5, I'm sorry, group 15, has 5 valence electrons, so it'll either form, if it's lucky, a minus 3 ion, or more than likely than not, covalent bonds. 
group 6, now I don't know if you see a trend here, will form 2 minus or minus 2 ions or covalent compounds because these are two away from having a stable electron configuration, so they only need 2. Okay? Don't forget when plus ion means lose electrons, a negative ion means gain electrons. All right, finally, oh, I lied to you. There is one more important name, but we've used it a whole bunch of times, so we should know it by now. Anyway, group 18 are our noble gases. They all have a complete valence shell, also called a, a stable, stable, sorry, electron configuration. They all have eight in the outer shell. Except for helium, which is part of the reason why there's this space here, it only has two. Because there's only room in that first shell for two electrons. They are inert gases. Inert means non-reactive. Now, there are some exceptions, right? Helium, neon, argon, completely non-reactive. But krypton, xenon can be forced in a lab. It never happens in nature, but it can be forced in a lab to react. And that's just due to their size. Okay, once we get into bonding and electronegativity and ionization energy and taking electrons away and stuff, we'll, we'll see a little bit more about that. But these are all non-reactive in nature. All right, question time. In the notes, in the notes, in the notes, not in today's notes, but I talked about in previous notes. So look at group one and see what stands out. And this was in the last note, so we'll see what we can remember. All right, that brings us to the end. I will see you guys.